Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well today we're going to be discussing the Z index or Z index. It's what brings elements forward or backwards on your website. We got three little elements here and as you can see they're overlapping. What we can do with Z index is pull the blue one forward and push the purple one back and structure them how we want them. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder so we can build on the front end. Okay, if I go down here, I've got a section, the blue tab. Inside that section, I've got a row, the green tab. It's got three columns in it, each with a call to action module. Okay, you could go into the module and change the position, but sometimes that doesn't work. My recommended way of doing it would be to go into the actual column it's in and do it that way. So if I go up into the row here, the green tab, hit the cog, we got three columns, left, center, and right. If I go into that first column, which is gonna be a, our little blue call to action there, we go over to our advanced tab, and this is common to all Divi modules. Once on the advanced tab, we can go down to position. What you wanna do is change it from relative to default. And you'll see the little Z index appear right there. If we change it back to relative again, it is actually down below here, but I prefer taking mine to the default. Now to move it forward, you need a higher number. To move it backwards, you need a lower number. So if I pull this to the right, you should see it slip in front of that sort of greeny one next door. There we go. If I take it back down, it should pop behind it again. It's actually popped behind the canvas there. There we go. Behind it, in front of it. Great. And obviously, if you want to pop it back, just pop it back. When it's turned white there, it's gone behind the actual page. There, there we go, that's perfect right there. Put it back where it was. And you can do a similar thing for the purple one, the third one right there. Just move this across this side. Again, we'll go over to advanced position and I want this to go behind so I'm going to drop it back there we go three does it the other thing is to go in this one and drop its Z number but you might find it falling behind the blue one to bring it back there we go and it's always going to be the higher number will be on top. For instance, our purple one there has now got a Z index of 19. And anything below 19, our second column's obviously got one that's less than 19. And whatever has the highest number will appear on the top. So if the blue one on the left there has perhaps a Z index of one, and this one has a Z index of two, it'll appear on the top. Don't know if we'll be able to flip this behind the blue one as we've got such low numbers going on here. I'm sure we can though. If I increment down with the little arrows, there we go. We flip that one behind the blue and the purple. And if we go up again, we can actually flip it in front of all of them by just making it the highest Z number right there. And as with most Divi modules, if you do something you don't like, just simply select it, delete it, and it'll go back to the default for you. Not only does this work with columns, it'll also work with rows and also sections themselves. So let's save our changes here. We'll save the row changes. And just to demonstrate, I've got another section here. Let's turn it blue, perhaps give it a blue background, and we'll pop it up on top of the section above. Okay, I'm in the actual section here. If I move this up so it's on top of our section above, we can flip those with the Z index too. So I'm just gonna to go to design, I'm gonna give it some negative margin in the spacing tab here. Margin is great for moving things left, right, up and down. So let's say give it a negative 150, that should drag it up 
there we go we're on almost pretty much on top of our other one right there if I roll down this page you can see that our rows are kind of mixed there we've got this one on top of this one and on top of that one because they've both got similar Z indexes there so if I wanted to make this row on top of the ones below we could go into this row on the top here and then at the moment you can see the bottom row is slightly on top of it there and here we can go into the whole row not the column this time do the whole row I'm going to go down to position you know I'm going to make it default here's our Z index we can take it down and put it behind right behind the page there Just drag it back up till it appears again there we go and if we want it totally in front we can just drag it all the way up and now it's in front of that little row below there so we got 53 as that row there if we decided we wanted this whole section to be in front of the one on top so it basically it would cut it off right there we could do the Z index on the section itself so let's go into the Z section again to advanced position default Z index if I give it a real high one now like perhaps 150 I don't think we've got anything above that it should jump on top of the other one and there we go as you can see this whole section now is on top of this section here let's just take it back down to where it was so there you go guys there's a brief overview of how to use your Z index or Z index to position your elements on top of each other. I hope that's made sense today and we've had a lot of questions about this and I hope that's shed some light on it for you. Really useful feature for positioning your elements. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.